head. Thank you everyone for joining us here today at Levittown Public Library with Kimberly. Um, this is Gaskew. Today is Monday, June 21st, approximately 11 a.m. Go ahead, Kim. Thank you so much, Shatomi. Welcome back, everybody. For those of you that are new, Agaskew just means posture. That's all. And there is nobody with any good posture or bad posture. It just is. And our body adapts to whatever the heck we give it. So if we were sitting at a chair all day answering a phone to our left, after a while, we're going to end up with some sort of rotation that the body memorizes. And this is how the body adapts, but it's also not a good way for the body to go throughout the day. So these are little things that catch my eye. And what I do is I give you different stimulus so your body can auto-correct itself. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stimulate the body and the body will auto-correct. I'm not trying to fix anybody because nobody's broken. We're trusting the wisdom of the body. Um, the tools that we're going to be using today, very, very simple stuff. You're going to be using a chair or an ottoman. This is for our static back stuff where we lay down on the floor. The floor traps us so that we can get rotation out of the body. If you have a hard time getting on the floor, some of my clients even do this in a bed. I've done this with some of my bedridden clients. You can lay on a bed and pile up some pillows for some of that. You want to get up to 90 degrees, really, so about 26 inches. The other thing that we're going to be using is a pillow off of your bed. Some of you have an Angoski block or you have the yoga block. If you're taking a pillow off of your bed, what you want to do is fold it in half because we want a lot of resistance when we use it. So when I push on it, it doesn't collapse all the way. We want resistance. Um, I think that'll be it for today. I don't think we're going to use a belt, but those of you that have been with me, sometimes I get really interesting and I decide, hey, pull a belt off of your pants and we'll use that. So if you do have a belt, leave it around. I might get creative today. Um, in the meantime, I'll try to do my best to modify everything that I could think of for any issues anybody has. But if something doesn't feel right to you, don't do the movement. I'll move on pretty quickly anyhow. And um, I'll do my best to modify as best I can. Where we're going to start today is at the wall or at the door. So I want everybody to stand up and I want you to take yourselves to a door or take yourselves to a clean wall where you could put your heels against something flat. And that's where we're going to start. I think I see a question over in the corner. Not sure, but maybe Hitomi will let me know about that. So what I want you to do is take your heels to the wall or take your heels to the door. And this is an interesting move. It's called standing at wall. How creative is that? Some of you might have a different shape in your behind and it might force you off the wall like so. If that's happening, I want you to step an inch or so away from the wall. The point of this is to stack your heels, knees, hips, Kim, shoulders. Uh, yes. They ask, could you please take a minute sometime to explain the use of the neck roll or back roll? When and why should we or should we not use them? And how about sleeping? Should we sleep with support under our neck? Good call. Okay, I'm going to get into this move and then we'll rant about that. So let me get everybody set up in standing at wall. So now you guys have the idea of what to do. We're going to put the heels on the wall. The point of the wall is to trap us. So we're trapping ourselves in this vertical line, vertical stack. So now that you're at your wall, I want you to make sure your feet are pointed straight ahead, feet are hip distance. Hip distance is a little bit bigger than your own fist between your your big toes, a little bit bigger than that. So you want hips, knees, and ankles to come out of this line that's about the width of a dollar bill and point your feet straight ahead. So when, when I come to the wall, if this is my first move, I feel one shoulder is on the wall, one butt cheek is flatter on the wall because I'm showing up with a rotation. We're just gonna stand here for a little while and we're gonna wait for the body to readapt. It might take 10 minutes for some of you, but I don't have that long. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes here, just a few. And while I do that, someone was asking questions about the role that you sometimes see me use and also about sleeping position. I always laugh when I get the question of sleeping position and how we should sleep. Um, when you fall asleep, your body is going to find the most comfortable position for it. And if it's not comfortable, it's going to wake you up. I'm not a big fan of, hey, you should sleep this way, sleep that way. If you go into ancient Chinese and, and Ayurveda, they say different constitutions will sleep different ways. Like somebody who's a kapha, bigger body type, tends to sleep on their stomach. Somebody who is a, a pitta, like, like me, tends to sleep on their back. 
And somebody who is a vata, who's like my sister, very waifish, very thin, very skinny, has a tendency to sleep on their side or flip flop. Um, so I can't say that one sleeping position is the best for you. Find a comfortable sleeping position and get in it. If you do have injuries, sometimes putting a different pillow underneath your head or putting a pillow underneath your knees can help alleviate these issues, shoulder injuries, back injuries. And that's down to you to kind of throw some mud at the wall and see what sticks. But all, all in all, I cannot say that there's one sleeping position that's best for everybody because everybody has a different posture and everybody has a different reason why things hurt or why things would be more comfortable than others. I'm gonna stay here for about uh, two more minutes. So as far as the rolls that you see me with, I use a roll, it's about three inches um, in diameter. And I use that for my clients who have a tendency to have a very flat lower back or a C-curved spine, meaning they're, they're tucked under and the shoulders round forward. So a very C-curved spine, like Cookie Monster. So when they lay on the floor for certain positions, I'll put a roll underneath their lower back and a roll underneath their neck because our spine should be an S curve, an S curve. So putting a roll will help maintain the S curve while we go through strengthening movements and realigning, realigning movements. It helps a great deal. So I'm heading towards that C curve spine and I know it. So I'm using that to help my muscles achieve the alignment I'm looking for in my, in my posture. It's the only reason why I use that. I do not use that for anybody and everybody. Um, you can absolutely give it a try if you think that you might be a C-curve. You can roll up a hand towel and then put it underneath your lower back when we're laying down on the floor. And I will point that out when I do use my curve roll. Fantastic. While we've been standing here, has anybody noticed anything's been shifting? I have a tendency to lean heavily into my right side because my left hip is a little off. And then it starts to balance itself out. It might take you 20 minutes or it might take you a few more moves, but we're not going to stay here that much longer, everybody. So I'm going to take you into the next move. If everybody's ready, if you do not have a nice big blank wall space, you're going to be just like me and imagine it. So I'm going to take you off of the wall. If you do have a big wall, wall space. I want you to stay on the wall. So I'm going to keep my feet hip distance. We're going to do a standing windmill. I'm going to bring the arms out to the sides. I'm going to keep my palms nice and open. If you have a shoulder injury, maybe your arms have to be lower. Maybe your hands have to be on your sides. You guys got to figure that out. Listen to your body. So I'm going to leave my butt stacked over my heels and I'm moving through my waist, leaning left and leaning right, back and forth. Keep your heels down. That's where a lot of people go wrong here. Everybody leans over and the heel lifts or they lean over and they slide their hips back and forth. I want your hips to stay put. Keep your butt on the wall or keep your butt on the imaginary wall. So I wanna pretend like there's a wall behind you but because I have the heater down by my heels. I can't bring my heels to the wall. So I have to imagine. I also think about my thumb and my pinky finger grazing the wall. That's gonna keep my palm open. It's also gonna keep my shoulders engaged. We're gonna stance out the legs a little bit wider. Think about a foot and a half to two feet wide. That's where I want you to be. Keep your feet parallel. Tendency is for people to avert your feet here. Don't do it. Point your feet parallel. That's gonna put more load on the hip flexors. That's what I'm going after here. So leaning left and leaning right. What this is also doing is waking up the stabilizing muscles down through your hips. Mostly we're working on actually TFL, tensor fascia latte, but you're gonna feel a lot. I have people that cramp down in their feet when we do this move, cramp down into their calves when we do this move. If that happens, yay, welcome to muscles that don't work. <laughs> we're gonna spread the legs open even wider. I want you to go as wide as you can, but still stay in control. If you've got socks on, suggestion is to put shoes on, uh, sneakers or go barefoot because I don't want you sliding all over the place. I've got clients that can't go this wide. If you can't go this wide, don't worry about it. Take what the body can give. Looking good there, Jim. Very nice. Cindy. Beautiful, Marie. I love seeing everybody's homes. Some of yours are worse than others. No names mentioned. Mine. <laughs> you just can't see it. 
<laughs> I put all the crap over in the corner. Come back to the first position, everybody. I hope you're feeling that in your legs and more than likely you're feeling it in your shoulders. If you need a break, take a break. And this stuff is not easy, especially if you're just jumping on this. And if you can't stand up, heck, I have some clients, they're in wheelchairs. They're in wheelchairs. So you can do this sitting in a chair. Sure you can. You can do this sitting in a chair. It's called sitting windmill. Uh, da, 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 da. Keep your heels down, everybody. Now that we came back to this first position, you might notice hmm, it feels a little different, feels a little easier. Maybe it feels harder, but we're looking for that change. If change happens, this is a good thing. Next move I'm gonna show you is a standing wall twist. I don't often give this move and it's not the easiest to do. It is a one-sided move. So what I want you to do is bring yourself about eight to 10 inches away from your wall or away from your door. I'm gonna show you two different angles of this so you know what's going on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna twist our torso towards the wall, but I'm gonna set your feet up in a specific position. Whichever leg you have coming to the center of the room, that foot's gonna go in front. So I touch my heel to my toe. And again, I'm about eight to 10 inches, maybe even a forearm distance away from the wall. So whatever leg is towards the center of my room, I put that foot in front. Now I just turn my body towards the wall. So I'm turning my chest towards the wall and I'm putting my hands on the wall. They're about shoulder height and they're really wide. Can you see that? They're wider than my shoulders. And as you do that, you'll feel one of your shoulder blades is coming back and down. It's being forced there. Now let's work into the legs a little bit more. I want you to distribute your weight evenly between your front and your back leg. And I also want you to tighten your thighs. We're gonna stay here for one minute. This is standing wall twist. Standing wall twist. If you don't feel one of your shoulders coming back and down, you might be a little bit too far away from the wall. This should be almost midway between a uh, uh, push up at the top stance and all the way down to the bottom. So you wanna be in like that middle push up area. Like you're doing a push up against the wall in this really funny fashion. Keep your thighs tight. I don't want anybody's knees bending here. When you tighten your thighs, it's gonna force your hips to work. So once the knee starts bending, the hip shuts down in a way. And for most of us, the hips are pretty much shut down and the shoulders are doing way too much work. So we're trying to get that roll to come back to the driving force of the hips. Great, we're gonna switch everybody. Now I can actually just rotate through my feet, but that can get confusing for some of you. So you're gonna face in the opposite direction, the leg that's on the inside towards the center of your room, you're gonna put that foot in front, touch your heel to your toe. Distribute your weight and twist your body. We're coming towards the wall. Hands are stanced pretty wide and now you're gonna feel the other shoulder start doing work. Thighs are tight. Don't lose that distribution of weight. I have that tendency to keep leaning heavy on the back leg. You might have the same thing. So distribute your weight evenly. We wanna load both hips in this funny twisted fashion. This is standing wall twist. Wow. My right hip is turning on hard. It's about ready to cramp, but I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. Ooh, that side is tough. Whoa, that's new. I haven't touched this move in a while. It's interesting to find this. Okay, come on out of that, everybody. Oh, I feel like doing an air bench after that. That's just what I feel, because that was a strong move. We're gonna give it an even stronger move. Now we wanna balance out that rotational aspect that we just introduced. So I'm gonna have you guys come to your door or come to your wall. If it is a door, make sure you're on the side of the door that closes the door or against the jam. Don't be leaning on the door so that you're working on the integrity of the lock or the latch, because if it lets go, you're gonna fall. So don't do that. <laughs> when we do air bench, 
And if this is too tough for you, you don't have to do it. You can just sit in a chair. You put your feet out further than your knees. We're gonna hang out here for a minute. You can slide down the wall as much as you feel is good for you. It's a challenging move. Yes, it is. I go up to my hips being the same height as my knees. If it's too much for me that day, just slide your butt up higher. I want your feet to be hip distance, everybody. Feet are hip distance. Tendency here is for a lot of you to have your knees drop in or your knees go out. Don't you dare let them. So if they're not able to hold straight, take a pillow and put it in between your knees and hold that. We're staying here for a minute. I know you've been here for maybe 20 seconds. So what? Suck it up. You can do it. But if you can't, get out of the move early. It's okay. Don't give up completely on yourself. Do two seconds. What we're doing here is we're using the legs to push your lower back into the wall. So if you feel like there's a curve in your lower back and it's not touching the wall, I want you to use your muscles to force your lower back into the wall. I'm gonna hang out for 30 more seconds, everybody. This is a very strong move. Some of you have a hard anterior tilt. So your pelvis already tips forward. So you have a huge curve in your lower back. Tendency is to have some lower back pain when you have that. So you might have to actually tuck your tailbone under like a frightened dog to just get the lower back to touch and then continue the rest of the way with your thighs. You've got eight more seconds, so you can handle it. Great, come on out everybody. I'm getting this feeling that we should come down to the floor. Is everybody feeling that with me? I wanna do that. Bring your block with you, bring your block with you. Coming down to the floor. Again, if you cannot hit the floor, you can lay on a bed. I've had some of you go on the couch. If it's just because you're afraid of the floor, you're hesitant, may I suggest get on the floor. You don't want the floor to be a scary place. Some of my new clients, the floor has become a scary place for them. We've got to reintroduce them to the floor. Heck, when we were in the library, we were helping people back up off the floor because they took the challenge and decided, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. There's people here to help me. If you can't get back up off the floor or if it's just difficult to get off the floor, give yourself that challenge. We've got people that no longer go on the floor because it became difficult. They didn't accept the challenge and now they can't. And that's not a, not a good place to be. You don't want to have to call the police to get you off the floor. So we're putting the legs up on top of the static back block or on top of a chair, whatever it is that you have. You want to try to maintain 90 degrees. So if your heels are lower than your knees, put a pillow underneath them, pick them up. If your heels are higher, you may have to find another chair. Tendency is to not use a bed. Bed's a little bit too high nowadays. Okay, everybody, I'm going to work into the shoulders. I'm going to give you pullovers. I'm going to reach the arms up towards the sky. Keep the elbows nice and straight. I'm going to drop the arms backwards overhead and then bring them over the chest. You can probably get down to the floor. I used to be able to, but now I'm working, working on a shoulder injury. I'm gaining my, gaining my strength back. So because I can't hit the floor doesn't mean that I bend my elbows to hit the floor. That's called cheating. Don't do that. Keep your elbows nice and straight. There are other leg positions that you can do this move in. So if something's bothering you or this is hurting you, um, you can take your feet to the floor with your knees bent. You can also take your bottoms of your feet together into the frog position. We're gonna do that a little bit later anyway. I'll show that to you. But again, if something's bothering you, get creative, change it up or just skip the move. Usually I do this move in frog position. It changes all of the muscles that you recruit when you're doing this. It can be easier to do this in frog position. But I decided to do it in static back. This is going to trap both sides of your pelvis. Frog position is going to work on getting a little more extension out of the pelvis. Here, we're in a different position. We're gonna stay in this position for our next move as well. It's a nice, easy one, it's called reverse presses.
Keep your elbows straight, everybody. Elbows are straight. These are called pullovers. If you bend the elbows, just like when you bend your knee, you're gonna shut down your shoulder or shut down your hip. We wanna reteach or re-educate the shoulder and the back how to work here. We're building symmetry back into the body. Next move is reverse presses. Now you can take these in different arm positions. You can bend the elbows, make your arms look like goalposts. I'm gonna turn so you guys can see that. You can make the arms look like goalposts and just let the hands rest. But the tendency when you do this is to get the neck involved. And now with my shoulder injury, I have a tendency to overuse my upper trapezius. So I'm gonna change the position of my arms. If you're okay here, then stay here. But if you're starting to feel neck tension, when you squeeze your shoulder blades together, so I'm squeezing both of my shoulder blades, the bones on my back, I'm squeezing them together, drawing my, almost drawing my elbows into the ground. If you feel a lot of your neck doing this, I want you to bring your elbows closer to your body and try it again. Where you should be feeling this is right here in between your shoulder blades. So as you're holding in this position, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together and letting it go. Go lightly, everybody. Squeeze and let it go. Squeeze and let it go. Again, if you're feeling it in your neck, you're gonna bring your arms here. If you're still feeling it, just bring your arms out with your palms up. That's where I'm gonna to be today. I'm gonna to be in a very regressed form. Very regressed form of reverse presses. So my palms are up, my arms are at my sides, and I'm squeezing my shoulders into the floor over and over. Some of you are very shut down in the shoulders and your mid back is compensating. So these shoulder squeezes look something like this. And you're lifting your back off the floor, lifting your belly button or your, or your solar plexus towards the sky. Don't try so hard. It's a light squeeze in between your shoulder blades. Very light, gives 30% of your effort. In fact, if that's happening to you and you're using more of your back, my suggestion is Put your feet on the wall or on the chair and bring your knees in towards your chest. That's gonna shut down your back and trap it. And then you'll continue squeezing and notice, huh, I can't lift my back up even if I wanted to. And that doesn't happen to everybody. So if that's not you, just stay in the static back position, it's fine. Over and over, I'm squeezing and releasing. If you guys are on my, my YouTube channel or my soon, soon to be shut down uh, website, you'll see some testimonials on there. One of the testimonials is from a pole dancer and she was having some forearm pain. I gave her this move and I said, okay, get on the pole now. And her pain was gone because I saw the position of her shoulders and what was going on. Those are the ladies over at Dream Dance Fitness. They're so cute. I loved working there. Okay, we're gonna go back to the pullovers, everybody. And this now serves as a functional test. So wherever you were before, we just did another move to help make more changes. So now you can say, gee, did that do anything for me? Does this feel different? Is it better? Is it worse? There it is. I love that move. That move helped me rehab after my surgery. I'm still rehabbing, of course, but that was one of my first moves. Doc said, don't do anything. And I went kind of, whatever. I am doing my reverse presses. I don't care if I was doing them in a chair or whatever, I am doing my reverse presses. And I did that. I needed some movement. After three days of not doing anything, I needed something. Beautiful. We're going to do upper spinal floor twist next. This is not an easy move, especially for some of you who have shoulder issues. So if we do this move and you feel, oh, that's a little too much, I'm going to show you a couple modifications. If you can't do this on the floor with me, you can do this sitting in a chair. This is your modification sitting in a chair. You're just going to sit, keep your knees together, and you're going to twist. We're going to hold for one minute on each side. But upper spinal floor twist is done on the floor. One of my favorites. So I'm gonna show you my busted side first. <laughs> that way I can show you how to modify it. So I lay completely on my side. Everything's at 90 degrees. I'm bringing my arms straight out in front of me. 
I'm keeping my knees at a 90 degree angle. Everything's at 90 degrees. I'm gonna take my right hand, my bottom arm, hold my knees in this vertical stack. I do not want them to slide. So when they slide, that counts as cheating. My top arm is gonna open like a book. Now this is a lot of weight and a lot of leverage on the shoulder and across the chest. So if this is where you have an issue and this is too much, you can either bend the arm and rest the hand on your ribs and that'll take the leverage off of the shoulder or you can rest the arm on something like a pillow or something behind you. So I've got my block right here and this is how I used to do it, but I'm actually feeling good today. I'm just gonna leave my arm dangle. So it's really tight after all that surgery. So I'm just gonna let it hang out here. I'm gonna hold here for a minute. Back in synergy, everybody like to call this the book pose because you open your arm like a book. Try not to let your hand slide down towards your butt. In fact, everybody try that. Slide your hand down towards your butt and you'll notice your shoulder joint starts to pitch forward and you start to feel it more in the joint. I want you to keep the arm in the same line as your opposing shoulder. Don't go any further down. You don't wanna go inferior to that. And that's gonna keep the stretch coming across the chest. You're gonna feel work in your back. You're also gonna feel work in the hip that's on the floor. So I'm also working on keeping the strength in your bottom hip. This is not just a shoulder stretch. A few more seconds here, everybody. So I used to be able to hit the floor, not anymore. And so what? I'm a work in progress and so are you. Right, we're gonna come out of it and go to the other side. So again, we're setting up in a nice 90 degree angle. Sometimes I use the side of my mat as a guide. I put my knees and my ankles on the mat. So I trap in a 90 degree angle. Bottom hand is holding my knees in the stack. You don't want the legs to move. So we're trapping the lower half and we're letting the upper body twist almost independently, but the body works as a unit. So it's not independent. Again, if something is hurting you or this isn't working, this is causing pain, you can modify by sitting your butt in the chair and doing this like I showed you before. You can take the hand and put it on your ribs. You can still twist that way. You don't need all the leverage on your shoulder. You start to make up something creative that works for you. Some of these moves have been borrowed from Pilates or yoga, but some of the moves are purely Pete Egoscu. He made these up. You can get creative too. Come on out. I'm gonna have everybody come to hands and knees. We're gonna do static extension position. I'm gonna give you a few different ways you can do this move. If you cannot get on your hands and knees, you could trap yourself against the wall. You can stand up and put your hands on the wall and get this, get this move done. Just get creative. You can do it hands and knees. You could do it fists and knees. You can do it elbows and knees, whatever works for you. So if you were doing this on the wall, you would put your hands on the wall and you do the same thing. We're just gonna lean in, let the shoulders collapse together and hang out here for two minutes. So we're gonna start with the knees hip distance, hands are right underneath our shoulders. And then we're gonna move the hands six inches forward. So I put my palm where my fingertips are, my palm where my fingertips are. It's only six inches. Now I'm gonna shift my weight forward so my shoulders are back in line vertically with my wrist. It's just a little shift. So my hips are six inches forward of my knees. If some of you are here and you feel like, oh, that's a lot in my back, you went too far. If it's too hard on your wrists, go ahead and come to your fists or come to your elbows. I want you to drop your shoulder blades together, let your head dangle and let your belly fall towards the floor like a sway back horse. So I don't care whether you're on fists, wrists or elbows. This is our move. Think of an S curve in the spine. If your elbows are starting to bend, let me give you a band-aid for that. If your elbows are bending, stance your arms out wider. That'll help getting to get your shoulders back and down without the elbows bending. 
It's just your shoulder that doesn't want to load. For those of you that are on your elbows, I'm going to up the ante for you. What I want you to do is to try to pull your knees in towards your chest without moving. That's going to ignite the hip flexor, secondary hip flexor. So you're going to feel it right in your crotch or right where your front pockets and your jeans would be. So I want you to try to pull your knees towards your, your elbows and your hips are gonna start to slide back. I want you to turn your hips on. Okay, we've been in it for a minute now, everybody. If you're ready to go with me for another minute, stay in it, stay in it. Again, if you're doing this on the wall, you just have your hands on the wall, just like my hands are on the floor, and you're letting your shoulder blades pin together while you stand there, perfectly fine. If you're on your elbows like I am, everybody, I want you to really fire your hip flexors, pull your knees towards your elbows so that your legs start to turn on. It's not a push from your elbows, it's pulling from your hips. Keep your head dangling, everybody, wherever you are. And if it's too much, get out of it. You don't have to stay in it. Try it for five seconds, try it for 10 seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one. Come on out. Oh boy. That elbow move is the first move on my menu for what's going on with my posture. So welcome to it. I'm gonna take you guys into another move called the cats and dogs. So we're gonna get a little bit, cats and dogs, we're gonna get a little bit of movement into our spine. This also takes place on the hands and knees, everybody. If you cannot go on hands and knees, I'm gonna show you in a chair. So put your hands right under your shoulders, knees are back under your hips, arch your back, shoulders collapse together and you look forward. Round your back, shoulders come away from each other and you look down, back and forth, back and forth. I promised I'd show you how to do this in a chair, very easy. Sit your butt in a chair, rest your hands on your legs, same thing, arch, look up, Round, look down, back and forth. Try to drive from your hips rather than lead with your head. Drive from your hips, everybody. Drive from the hips. I'm gonna hit you hard now. We are going to do sitting floor reversed. Some of you cannot do this move, so I'm gonna give you an option to modify it. When I'm tired, I can't do this move. I'm crying. It's a three minute long move, but we have done it in the past for five minutes. We're gonna do it for three minutes today though. Okay, for those of you that have a C-curved spine and you have the tendency to kind of do this and you cannot sit yourself upright from your hips. Now remember, sitting upright is not this. It's not lifting your sternum, it's this. Watch my hips. Did you see what I did? That's a big difference. Rolling a little arch into your lower back is very different than lifting your boobs. Well, Kim's boobs, you might not have boobs, your sternum. <laughs> so if that's where you're at and you're finding, whoa, I'm slouching back, I'm falling back, put your back against the wall or put your back against the door. I'm gonna show you the reversed move of this. So this is putting my feet on the wall. So it's very challenging. Whether you're sitting with your back against the wall or your feet against the wall, which is way more challenging, we're gonna hold it for three minutes. Here are the keys. Keep your thighs tight. Try to put an arch into your lower back and draw your shoulders back and down. Whether you're on the wall or your feet are on the wall, doesn't matter. We're gonna give it a hold for three minutes. Thighs are tight. Hips are forward, shoulders are back. I do have some clients who have such a lordotic curve. No, strike that. They are so posterior. They have such a, a, a tuck in their tailbone. They're so stuck here that even when they walk their tailbone to the wall, their tailbone doesn't hit the wall. They're very um, egg-shaped. So if that's you, 
don't try so hard to put that arch into your lower back. Just let the wall hold you upright. This is not an easy move. But no matter which position you're in, thighs are tight, ankles are dorsiflex. So I'm pulling my toes towards me, pushing my heels away from me, and shoulder squeeze. Those three things. I've got the extra addition of, okay, try to put that curve in my lower back. We are almost halfway through this move. I know it's not easy. This is my menu they gave me a few years ago from Agascu. It's, it's a killer. It's kind of a short one, which is good, but it's hard. Again, this move is called reverse sitting four. I hope you feel your thighs shaking because you're keeping them so tight. That's the point. I just noticed my hips shut down and my back started taking over. So I'm just gonna reset, relax, pull from my hips, shoulders back, thighs tight. So I started to cheat and lift my sternum. That's not the same thing as putting a little arch into your lower back. Less than a minute left. Come on, Kim, you can do it. I'm catching a lot of you doing sitting floor with your back against the wall, good for you. Feet are hip distance, legs are nice and tight, ankles are dorsiflex and shoulders are squeezing back. Just like that cute little move we did on the floor, we did the little shoulder squeezes over and over. Same thing here, we're holding. Squeezing back and holding. Last 30 seconds. Oh, it's so tiring. Legs are shaking. I hope yours are too. There's a San Francisco 49er that was working over at Agassi. All of them do. They all do Agassi. One of the therapists had him in this move for 20 minutes because the man had an elevated shoulder. It took 20 minutes for his shoulder to drop down. Amazing. We'd go after it using the legs. Come on out of it, everybody. Oh, let's take a break. We're going to go into frog position. You're going to like this one. I'm going to hold it for two minutes. So I put the soles of my feet together and let the knees flop out. I'm going to lay on my back, though. If you can't lay on the floor, can you do this on a chair? Certainly. Go ahead and sit in a chair. Put, put the couch in front of you. Put a chair in front of the couch. Get creative. I'm going to use my roll here. Again, it's about three inches. Maybe four fingers. You can roll up a towel and put this underneath your lower back. I answered this question earlier. Why would you be using a roll only for those of you who have a flat lower back? If you've got a lower back that's already tipping forward, you already have a hyper curve there, you wouldn't use this roll, not at all. But me, my back is having a tendency to go flat. So I use this roll. Stay in here for two minutes. That's it, everybody. And this might be a long time for you to stay here. I catch some of my clients, they are so tight. One leg's here, one leg's there. The legs can't relax. They can't flop. There's so much tightness. If this is what they have, that's okay. It happens sometimes. But if you can't last in this pose and it doesn't feel good to you, get out of it. You can come to the hook lying position and just bend your knees and put your knees towards the sky. You can come back to the static back position if you want to. We're almost a minute into frog position. Like I was saying before in the static back position when we were doing pullovers, Sometimes we do the pullovers in this position. This is frog. There's no harm in testing yourself and seeing, gee, what do the pullovers feel like here? What do reverse presses feel like here? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it beneficial for me? This is an exploration of you. I'm giving you all of these different exercises so that you can understand what is beneficial for you. I feel bad about it, but sometimes I give people exercises and they try them and they're in pain the next day, like the bad pain. I don't mean to put them there, but it's something that they now learn about their body. Ooh, okay, this move my body does not like. And this is important to know. 
first off, so you don't do it again. <laughs> and second off, so we can know how to impact that in a beneficial way. I wish I could stay here forever with you guys. I really do, but we must move on. Okay, friends, I'm going to give you a partial workout from an old Egoscue workout. You might end up panting. You'll be okay. We're gonna do bird dog. And bird dog is a hands and knees move. If you cannot get onto hands and knees, I'm gonna give you cross crawl. So you can lay on your back. You can even lay on a bag. And you can do right arm overhead while your left knee pulls in and back and left arm overhead while your right knee pulls in. So that's the option if you cannot get on your hands and knees. Otherwise, we're coming to hands and knees and we're gonna do bird dog. Try to keep your knees hip distance and look in between your knees. Make sure you can't see your ankles. Sometimes people's ankles tend to come in and that's called cheating. <laughs> That's called cheating. You wanna keep the ankle in line with your knee so you force your hip to do this work. We're gonna hang out here for maybe a minute and a half. I'm not even gonna count these. Reach your right arm forward, reach your left leg back. If you're not stable, keep your toe on the floor, but if you're okay, lift the leg, hold for a second, and then switch. Back and forth, this is what we're gonna do. Back and forth. This is working on shoulder stability, hip stability, the muscles that are inside and outside, rotating muscles. We're working on the big posture muscles, glutes all the way up the back, erector spinae, trapezius. Working on a whole lot of stuff here. I don't care if you dorsiflex or plantar flex your foot. So you can point your toes behind you, you can pull your toes towards you. Figure it out. If something feels a little more challenging and you like it, keep it. But when I dorsiflex my ankle here, which means I push my heel away and I pull my toes towards me, what does that do to your knee? Therefore, your hip. Making sense? So if it forces my knee to stay straight, it forces my hip to work. When you point the toes, it has a tendency to bend the knee and then you get the hamstring kicking on. It's not a bad thing, but just a different style. All right, ladies and gentlemen, enough of that. Gonna come onto your back. We're gonna do the figure four. If I were to give this to you in therapy, we would call it the hip list. It's not easy, but my lady who's in a wheelchair surprised me two weeks ago and she did it with no problem. So if you're not in a wheelchair and you can't even attempt this, give me a try. You can do it sitting in a chair too, everybody. So we're gonna lay down on the back, no roll. <laughs> Leave your upper body relaxed, knees are bent. I want you to put your feet hip distance to start because I want you to be really clean with this form. This one can be a doozy. We're gonna cross the right ankle to the left knee. See how I got that nice triangular space in between my legs? You're gonna keep that. Here's the kicker. You're gonna bring your left knee towards your chest. At the same time, draw your right knee away from you. It's a push-pull without your hands. We're holding here for one minute. And what I'd like you guys to do while we hold here for one minute is make sure that you don't twist your body in order to get this done. If that's happening and you can't keep your pelvis from twisting, then you can put the foot on the floor and just draw the bent knee away from you and work on the strength from there. It's not the easiest move in the world. It's not. But like I said, my lady who's in a wheelchair all day, she got on the floor and she did this. She did it 45 seconds on one leg and a minute on the other leg while she told me, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> Wanted to smack her silly. She loves to say, oh yeah, Kim, oh yeah, sure, oh yeah, right. I'm bringing duct tape next time I go to her house. She loves to tell me all the stuff she can't do and then she surprises me by doing it. And I say, come on, come on. <laughs> You're not fooling me. 
five, four, three, two, one. Did you guys feel that? I hope so. We got another side to do though. Here we go. And across the left ankle to the right knee, blah, 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 blah. When you're ready, pull your right knee in towards your chest. You can definitely get this done in a chair. See, look, I'm sitting in a chair. I'm crossing my ankle on my knee. I'm getting a stretch. And if I can, I'm picking my foot up off of the floor. It's not easy, no. You can feel we're working on a lot of stuff here. I'm sure you feel some abdominals kicking on because they have to support the hip flexor that's pulling your knee in towards you. You probably feel some butt turning on, that bent knee on your left side. We're using the external rotator muscles. Hold on to it, everybody, 15 more seconds. But if you can't, or you're feel, you might be feeling real genuine pain, go ahead and put the leg down. It's not for you just yet, that's all. Relax, come on down everybody. Oh no, we got crunches next. You know what, I'm gonna give them to you. You deserve it, <laughs> we're gonna do crunches. If you noticed when we did air bench earlier with our back against the wall, if you notice that your knees love to dive in or dive out, I want you to take one of your blocks or your pillows. You're gonna put it right between your knees for these crunches. These are not easy to do. These are not easy because we're not gonna do normal crunches. We're doing them egoscue style, which means we wanna keep extension in the upper part of the body. So we're going to interlace the hands behind the head, leave your knees bent, leave your feet on the floor. Now my left shoulder does not wanna cooperate here, but I'm gonna do my best. I want you to look at a point on the ceiling behind you. So pick like the far corner where the wall meets the ceiling. Do not lose that spot in your eyes. I want you to lift towards that spot. I don't want you to curl up and look at your knees. When that happens, you're doing it wrong. So we wanna keep the elbows back and down. I'm gonna give you one minute to squeeze off however many you want. So I'm looking back towards that spot. I'm lifting an inch, two inches, maybe six inches off the floor. Do less to do more. Keep your shoulders back and down. In fact, in a perfect world, your elbows will hit the floor before your back does. Do less to do more. This crunch is not about rounding your upper body towards your knees. This is about training your shoulders to hold extension while we train your abdominal muscles to pull your torso into flexion. That's what the abs are designed to do. That's it, they pull your torso into flexion. I'm still looking at that spot on the ceiling behind me, folks. I haven't lost it. When I had a really bad, bad shoulder injury, I wasn't able to put my hands behind my head. So I actually put my hands on my shoulders a few times. So that's an option too. Relax, everybody, good job. Not the worst, not the worst, everyone. You doing well? Okay, next one's gonna be a little bit of a doozy. I know you can do it. I'm gonna give you a couple modifications. You're gonna use a chair. We're gonna do stair crabs. Now, when we were in Syosset, we got to go to the stairs and do stair crabs all the way up. Man, that was fun. But we're gonna use a chair or you can use nothing if you're feeling really, really good. So the other word for this is called Spider-Man's. We're gonna start with our hands either modified on a chair. And I want you to think about stepping your feet, keeping them parallel, forward, forward, hips stay low, back, back, hips stay low. That's the point of this, is to get the hips really low. So I'm going forward, forward, low hips, back, back, low hips. Feeling really good today? You could turn it into a Spider-Man, which is stepping your foot all the way up by where your hand is and coming into a Malasana squat. For those of you that take yoga, and I know some of you do, and step back and back. We're gonna do this for a full minute, everybody. Your choice. Put your hands on a counter if you can't get that low. Put your hands on a window if you can't get that low. I don't care where you go. Go wide, try to get low, keep your feet parallel. 
We got one minute. Here we go. Maybe you're using a chair today. This might be what it looks like using a chair. Step, 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 step. We're working on hip flexion. Step, 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 step. On the floor for a full on Spider-Man. Here, here, keeping it low. Here, here. Ten more seconds, everybody. I don't care if you're just watching me or if you're doing something yourself. And that's it. Yay. You know what? I feel like giving you guys a break. 100 jumping jacks. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, everybody. We're going to come back down to hands and knees. We're going to do cats and dogs. Again, you could do this in a chair if you need to. Just going to go for 10. Keep trying to drive from your pelvis, from your hips. Wonderful. Have everybody come back to a standing position. We're going to come back to the wall because this is the second time we're hitting the wall. You can use this as a functional test to see what has changed. <laughs> everybody feel that? Feeling those little differences? We're going to finish out with some shoulder exercises on the wall. Ah, very good. Okay. So heels on the wall or on the door. Again, if you've got a different shape to your behind and it's pushing you away, just walk your feet out far enough so your heels are underneath your hips. We wanna stack. We're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades back towards the wall, hold them there, lift and lower. I know at least one of you who is on with me right now, this causes more pain. You have that tendency to want to protract. If that feels better for you with the lifting or you want to do shoulder circles or something different, go for it. But I'm going to do shoulder retractions with elevations. So we're coming back to this vertical loaded position. This is how we're going to be spending most of our day. And we're just making sure everything is talking to each other and reminding itself, hey, try to hold this new pattern that we gave you through all of, this, all of these exercises on the floor. That's why I have a tendency to give you vertically stacked moves when we finish. Let me give you a round of a little bit more. I'm gonna do three positions po raise. Looks like this, feet or hip distance. I want you guys to pay attention to your ankles. I'm gonna come close to the camera so you can see. This is how you don't do it. You see how I rolled my ankles out? I don't want you to roll your ankles out. I want you to keep your ankles steady and straight across the balls of your feet, lift straight up, straight up. Tendency is to roll out, do not supinate. So we're gonna do a set of 10 in each leg position. Feet straight ahead for the first 10. In therapy, I usually have people hang on to a door handle and lean back so that we keep the stack. When you do this with nothing in front of you, tendency is for the hips to bail forward just for balance. So if you have something to hang on to and you can keep that vertical stack and lift straight up, that'd be cool. We're gonna turn the feet out now. We're gonna evert the feet. I'm gonna do around here. Again, try not to roll the ankles out. Take a look down if you're not sure what's going on. Knees stay straight. Anybody feel this creeping up their hamstring into their butt? This is not just a calf exercise. Our last position 
is going to be inverted feet or internally rotated femurs. So we're rotating in from the hip. My knees are pointing in. This is a toughie, it's challenging. Ballerinas love this one. <laughs> they love this one. This is very difficult for ballerinas to do, but the body needs to remember how to do it. If it can't do it, we run into problems. A lot of you are probably gonna be feeling this into your lower back. This actually helps restack your spine by adjusting through your femurs. Guys, that's it. We have run out of time. Thank you for sweating along with Kim today. If you enjoyed it, put some comments in the YouTube video after viewing it, ask me questions. I will never answer them. So uh, enjoy. And for next week, I hope to punish you with a wet noodle. See you then. <laughs>